time, the perception of time. Not like Haidasi when it's biological time, but the perception of time. Just do a very quick mental, mental, we draw this all, put it all together. We'll go back mentally billions and billions of years ago till about the beginning of time. And we'll pretend way back here at the beginning of time, when time grabs a hold, there was an intelligent community. It's totally fictitious, okay? And the intelligent community has a laser and it's going to shoot out a, burp, a blast of light. And on that, pl and every second it's going to pulse, every second, pulse, 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 a pulse of light every second. And it's going to shoot the light out. And by chance, it's all by chance, right? Some people say. By chance, billions and billions of years later, way over here on the timeline, we have the earth with a big dish antenna. And we're going to receive that pulse of light just by chance it comes to us. Or it could have gone out in all directions and one of them had to come to us. It shoots off the pulse of light. And on that pulse of light is imprinted, because we know we can print information on, on light. That's how we have fiber optics, sending information by light. On that pulse of light, that sliver of light, beep, is written, I'm sending you a pulse every second. And then a second goes by, and the next pulse goes. Now, light travels at 300 million meters a second. So the two light pulses are separated by two, 300 million meters at the beginning, right? And now they travel through space for billions of years, and they're going to reach the Earth billions of years later. But wait a minute. Is the universe static? No. The universe is expanding, right? The universe is expanding. That's the cosmology of the universe. And the universe is expanding doesn't mean that it's expanding into an empty space outside the universe. There's only the universe. There's no space outside the universe. The universe expands by space stretching. So as these pulses go through, through these billions of years of travel, and the universe is stretching and space is stretching, what's happening to the pulses? The space between them is stretching also, right? And so they get further and further and further apart so that when we receive them billions of years later and the, and the first pulse arises and say, wow, a pulse and written on it, I'm sending you a pulse every second. It's, you know, who knows what's out there. You call all your friends, you get the, you get the dish antenna all tuned up and you wait for the next pulse to arrive. And does it arrive another second later? No. A year later? Maybe not. Maybe billions of years later. Because it depends on how long in the distance, how much time this pulse of light has traveled through space, is to the amount of stretching. The amount of stretching that has occurred. And that's standard cosmology. It's not Aisha Torah trying to sell you a bill of goods. Peebles, certainly one of the five heavyweights, the most important persons in Big Bang cosmology, I quote him in The Science of God, is if I had paid him to write this sentence, it wouldn't have been more perfect. The standard interpretation of the stretching of information as an effect of the expansion of the universe, predicts that the same stretching factor of the universe applies to the observed rates of the occurrence of events. The standard interpretation, now this is the heavyweight of physics, one of the major spokesmen for Big Bang cosmology, the standard interpretation of the effect of the expansion of the universe is to stretch out the rates of occurrence of events. We look at time going backward, and we see 15,000 billion years. You know, it's a big universe. The uni looking forward from the universe is very small, billions and billions of times smaller. The Torah says six days. And they both might be correct. What's exciting about the last five years is we now have the data for the first time to know what the relationship of the view of the time from the beginning relative to the view of time today is. We now have that quantified. It's not like it's a, it's a fi fiction any longer. And I take it directly from, there's a dozen physics textbooks that you can use. They all bring the same number. The general relationship between the time here, near the beginning, and the time today is a million, million. It's a one with 12 zeros after it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's the relationship. So that if a view, if a view from the beginning looking forward, said, well, I'm sending you a, a, a pulse every second. Would we see it at every second? No. We would see them every million, million seconds, because that's the stretching, the effect of the expansion of the universe. Well, the Torah doesn't say every second, does it? It says what? Six days. How would we see those six days? As six days? The Torah sees it as six 24-hour days. When, the, when this make-believe... Uh, Group of, group of whatever sent us the pulse every second, it was really a, a second on your watch. We just don't perceive it as a second. We perceive it as something very different. And they're both true. If the Torah says we send you information for six days, would we receive that information as six days? Or would we receive it as six 
million million days, we would receive that information as six million million days. Of course, the perspective is from the beginning looking forward. We would see this as six million million days. That's the end of standard cosmology and ancient biblical interpretation. Now I'll bring you the only thing I bring to the party. I said six million million days. That's very interesting. What would that be in years? Well, it wasn't a hard calculation. You just divide by 365 and find that it comes out to be 16 billion years. Essentially, the estimate of the age of the universe. Not a bad guess for text 3,000 years ago. I'm going to be clear. I've discussed this with scientists around the world. It doesn't mean that they say, hallelujah, now I believe in God. That's not what they say. It could be all a coincidence. It might be a coincidence. What's extraordinary is is, first of all, the matching from thousands of years ago. I didn't pull it out of a hat. That's why I lead up to it very slowly so you can follow it step by step. But what's extraordinary now is you can look at the development of time day by day. See, it's the expansion factor, the doubling. Every, every time the universe doubles, the perception of time is cut in half. So it's the doubling rate. Now, when the universe was small, it was doubling very rapidly. But by the time it gets to be big, it takes longer and it's a constant velocity. So to double a universe when it's twice as big will take twice as long. So if it takes one hour to double it now in size, the universe doubles in size, it's twice as big, it will take two hours. Then to double in size, four hours, eight hours, 16. Because each time it's bigger, it has to, du to double in size, it has to move that much more. That's called exponential. And just to wrap it up very quickly, Looking at this rate of expansion, which is exactly taken from the principles of physical cosmology, a textbook that is used literally around the world, relating it to this relationship between the beginning and now, the specific number, which was averaged at 10 to the 12th, is in fact the temperature of quark confinement when matter freezes out of the energy, 10.9 times 10 to the 12th Kelvin degrees, divided by, or the ratio to the temperature of the universe today, 2.73 degrees. That's the initial ratio, which changes exponentially as the universe expands. And the numbers come out to be as follows. I'm not going to put the math on the board because anyone wants they can contact me. I'm happy to go through the mathematics. Or I lead you by the hand in the science of God. The numbers come out to be the following. That the first of the six 24-hour days, from a biblical perspective, lasted 24-hour day, 24 hours. 24 hours as we know it. But the duration, from our perspective, was 8 billion years. 8,000 million years. The second day, from the Bible's perspective, lasted 24 hours. From our perspective, it lasted 4 billion years. The third day, 2 billion years, 1 billion year, a half, and a quarter. When you add those all up for the six days, you get 15 and 3 quarter billion years. Essentially, the number that Alan Sandage reported to the New York Times about two months ago. And it's not by chance. Or maybe it is by chance. What, what allows you to investigate the chance, which I'm not going to go into now, is now knowing the duration of each day, you can then tell when each day existed in the past. Because you now you just add these up and you can find through the beginning of each day. And then the Bible goes out on a limb, as it were, and tells you what happens on each day. Not only does it give you the age of the universe, it tells you what happens on each of those days. And now you can take cosmology, paleontology, archaeology, and look at the history of the world and see whether, if not day by day, they match. And I'll give you a clue. They match enough to send chills up your spine. There's something fishy going on here. And that's exactly what Moses says. If you want to see the fingerprint of God in the history, Consider the days of old, or the flow of civilization from Adam forward. Day by day, the Torah tells an accurate account of what happened in cosmological development of the universe. Thank you. For a free cassette catalog in the U.S., call toll-free 1-800-VOICES-3. Our email address is voices at aish.edu.